Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. I'm part of the click, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes! 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 I, I got an idea, yeah. Beat up John Cena! Give me a hell yeah! Hey, oh, a little bit of the bubbly! Too sweet! The following episode is scheduled for one fall, and it is for your listening pleasure. This is In The Click. What's up, everybody? Baby Hugh here, and sitting right next to me is my brother, Tommy. How's it going, Tommy? I'm good. How you doing? And joining us, it's our good brother from Pro Wrestling 101 on Instagram. It's Richard. How's it going, Richard? I'm doing good, too. How are you? I'm doing awesome. It's been, uh, it's, I, I, I'm, uh, been enjoying myself. It's a little a bit of a Whoa. holiday weekend for, for most people here in America. Uh, uh, I'm enjoying the three day weekend. So I'm looking forward to, uh, having a fun episode tonight with you guys and then, uh, enjoying my day off tomorrow. So can't complain too much. Are you off tomorrow? No. You, oh, so you do have to work tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Way to rub it in his face. Sorry. Danny. <laughs> Damn it. My bad. <laughs> I did not know. So, uh, but no, here we are back at it for uh, another fun episode of In the Click. As always, remember subscribe Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, YouTube, a hey, any major podcast platform. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Buy the merch over at Teespring and follow us on social media as well. And uh, a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with some clickbait news and a big announcement that came out yesterday by way of WWE concerning WrestleMania, not for just this year or next year, but the following year for the next three years. It was a, a big announcement that aired during uh, the Saturday NFL football games. So they officially announced the dates and locations for WrestleMania, as I said, for the next three years. So there's been a lot of speculation and rumors of where WrestleMania was going to take place this year. I know originally before the pandemic, it was supposed to take place in L.A. at the new SoFi Stadium. But obviously COVID hit, the pandemic's been going on. And so a lot of people were assuming things were going to get pushed back, especially here in California with all the strict COVID stay at home orders and whatnot. And just the chances of something happening down in LA was probably slim to none, especially we're still just trying to figure out the whole vaccine situation, how to get it out there to the masses. So uh, a lot of people were speculating that it was going to be a, a make good since it didn't take place in Tampa last year. It was going to be in Tampa Bay this year. So it is official. So uh, WrestleMania this year is going to be happening uh, from what? Which stadium is that, Tommy? It's the Raymond James Stadium. Raymond James Stadium, home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So in Tampa Bay, WrestleMania 37. And it's going to be two nights this year, Saturday, April 10th, Sunday, April 11th. So two nights once again, just like it was last year. Just like Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. And then WrestleMania 38 next year is going to be Sunday, April 3rd, 2022 at AT AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas, or technically Arlington. Yeah, it's Arlington. But uh, also home of the Cowboys. And first time back there since uh, WrestleMania 32, which was 2016. Yeah. And then uh, uh, let's see. WrestleMania 39 will be down in LA, the new SoFi Stadium, April 2nd, Sunday, April 2nd. Home of the Los Angeles Rams. And Chargers. Yeah, 2023. So uh, uh, exciting stuff. Richard, you and I, we were talking off the air. Uh, we really enjoyed the announcement video for this. It was like a WrestleMania uh, news, right? It was like a reporter <laughs> situation. It was like Triple H yeah. and Stephanie McMahon. Yeah. What was the, uh, so, the Triple- show that, that uh, Gorilla Monsoon had? With oh, um, like that. Oh my god! I'm totally spacing on it now. I am too. Was it All Star Wrestling? No, no. But uh, I mean, we saw Stephanie McMahon, Triple H, husband, wife inside a a a mock newsroom. Yeah. Uh, Triple H had a wig on, some glasses. He's going by the name Henry E. Panky, and Stephanie McMahon was uh, I need I need a I need to feel a man. (laughs) 
Sorry. You sound like great, like prank, like to- like Bart Simpson prank yeah, call names say, for Mo. Like this- yeah. Colin Mo, prank Colin Mo. Yeah. But uh, Stephanie or Anita kept calling Triple H or uh, Henry as Hank, so therefore <laughs> Hanky Panky, Hanky Panky. So, um, but yeah, Richard, just kind of your thoughts on overall just the announcement of WrestleMania. I mean, me personally, I was excited. Okay, WrestleMania this year will be two nights once again, um, but just a little bit interesting. Looks like LA is going to be pushed back for a couple years now. That's fine. I mean, yeah. with the, the world we're living in right now, I mean, everything's pushed back because they're just doing their make good for this, for 2020's WrestleMania. So mm-hmm, yeah. they're just moving it back. Uh, primetime wrestling, by the way. Thank uh, you. Oh, prim- <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, That's yeah. what it was. Um, yeah. I, I, I thought the video was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, everything about it was funny. And it reminded me of old DX. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. They're yeah. hijinks. But uh, I mean, I love the the john cena aspect of it where they couldn't see him they couldn't see him they couldn't see him uh and, and then he, he just on pops screen. in yeah and he's highly unprofessional not knowing that they're recording <laughs> uh, sasha banks so uh they cut the sasha banks first uh yeah. or no was it sasha banks first um yeah. no roman reigns roman reigns was first and he's like you know, I'm the head of the table and just, yeah, uh, Paul Heyman and them just announcing, uh, yeah, uh, Tampa Bay this year, two nights. Then they cut back to Sasha Banks, who was being a reporter, and the person comes walking up and kind of reveals everything that she was supposed to say. She grabs the paper and then rereads it. She's like, I, I thought that was a great detail. The fact that the girl just spoiled everything. And- <laughs> And Sasha's like, you're the hurt. Uh, I, you heard it here first for me. <laughs> and, yeah. then, uh, uh, and then, yeah, John Cena comes out, Mr. Hollywood now to announce WrestleMania coming to L.A. So it's very interesting. So one. OK, cool. I'm happy. Tampa Bay City, of Tampa Bay is going to get the make good for uh, WrestleMania this year. And then a uh, um, little surprise, though, Texas is going to get it next year. Just like. You said, I think everything's being pushed back because of the pandemic. We don't know how things are going to be in the coming months. I know Biden and the new administration have apparently a COVID plan as far as a vaccine's concerned. Tommy, what were you saying about Fauci? He was hoping like if America can get to like 60 or 70 percent, we can kind of get back to normal. again. Yeah, somewhere around 70 to 80 percent. Um that's the normality rate they want to go for. And As people with the vaccine? With the vaccine. Okay. And hopefully that will be probably by the end of summer, early fall. Yeah. So I, I, they haven't made an official announcement of how it's going to look for this year's WrestleMania, if fans are going to be allowed in attendance. I know Florida and their rules are a little more soft than other states. but yeah, DeSantis. I, I mean, but maybe like, you know, Richard, as we saw Wrestle Kingdom this year, it was a uh, smaller capacity. I think it only had 20,000 people, but they were kind of in impo- or uh, actually most of them were on the floor sitting next to each other, which I was kind of shocked by. But maybe with the big football stadium, they can do it pods where people sit in sections in the, your, their respected party. Well, yeah. No matter, no matter what, it's going to be a better attendance than last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. That's exactly. Definitely. <laughs> and then, uh, so next. Because they've been doing that with uh, the fights, you know, that had been held in uh, Texas at in dallas or uh, san antonio or whatever mm-hmm. it's it's like sparse crowd you know just kind of spread out spread out you know so that makes sense why they're gonna go probably go to texas next year because who knows you know uh the state of the country even a year from now so well, i mean you you look at you look at something like that or, or new japan the difference between new japan having people in attendance and us is that the japanese people have been a lot better about dealing with this virus than we have because we've had so many people denying it yes yeah. <laughs> and they've been wearing their mask every day they've been yeah. following the rules following the, the yeah strict guidelines yeah i mean i know they had a little outburst recently but mm-hmm. uh but i mean i think it's partly because of the holidays and whatnot but yeah. uh no but anyway it, it's exciting so it looks like next year texas just because like i said the rules are also softer there just like in florida yeah so big stadium who knows how much of a capacity they'll be able to have even texas so my guess my interpretation is like they want la to be the big one the hollywood one they well, want a full capacity sellout crowd so they're like you know what let's push it back to two years because hopefully by then the complete pandemic will be yeah. done with well and if you look at it had they moved ahead and done la this year 
uh, Los Angeles is the second worst city in the United States right yeah. now for the virus. So it doesn't make sense to do it. So who knows even yeah if Governor Newsom will even allow it to happen too. That's the other thing. So there's a lot of politics with just the state, of, Cal- state of California. So yeah. um, you know, it kind of bugs me. It's like ah, oh, two years got to wait for come back to California because like you know I was really before the pandemic I was anticipating like oh do a road trip go to WrestleMania this year. No, I got to wait two years. But hey, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And then I'm kind of curious like. For fans can come to attendance this year's WrestleMania, even the press, is press going to be allowed as well? I mean, there's a lot of questions in my head. Probably Pers- not. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, with, with, you know, that's going to be what, it's what, three months away? So who knows yeah. how, how different the country is going to be in well, three just, months. It just means we save our money more for the next one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I mean, I would love to go to Texas as well. Maybe next year, hopefully things will be better at that point, so... Uh, and we'll hopefully. be taking our vaccines already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have our vaccines by then. Hopefully, there's no travel restrictions. Or uh, I know of my work personally, if uh, if you travel more than 150 miles from where you live, you automatically have to quarantine for 14 days. So, uh, wow. yeah, so that's that's that kind of puts a, a, a speed bump. Things. Yeah, if 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 I was even just thinking about going to WrestleMania this year, but. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? At this point, probably not going to happen. But Just stay at home, folks. Yeah. Wear your mask. Be smart. Be like uh, uh, Drew McIntyre with his PSA, which we'll get into in a second. But uh, no. But nonetheless, hey, WrestleMania season's almost here. Royal Rumble, two weeks away. Uh, I love this time of the year, Richard. Just there's so much great wrestling between Wrestle Kingdom, Royal Rumble, and then the road to WrestleMania. So good stuff. So uh, very excited with that announcement. All right, moving on over to some news concerning Dark Side of the Ring, our favorite docu-series that's on Vice TV that documents just pro wrestling in general and uh, all the craziness with the different topics that they cover. So it was announced this week that uh, the very first episode for season three is going to be uh, uh, about Brian Pillman. And we got that announcement by way of Stone Cold Steve Austin, who was on Vice TV uh, on the Carrie and Jamil's won't stick to sports show. That's also on Vice TV. We know Jamil Hill used to be on ESPN and a uh, former sports journalist. And she's very active on Twitter. Yeah. And so Stone Cold was on there just talking about promoting his show on the USA Network. And uh, Jamil was asking a question just about life after wrestling. But by way of doing so, she made a reference to uh, her other favorite show on Vice besides her own is Dark Side of the Ring. And she just just do it out there. Oh, yeah, I heard you're going to be on season three and then move to tour question. So Stone Cold more or less confirmed it. And then he went on Twitter. Dark Side of the Rings people went on social media. So they mm-hmm. confirmed it. Mm-hmm. Stone Cold Steve Austin will be part of season three, uh, especially the Brian Pillman episode. Uh, but yeah, Richard, man, just uh, I don't know about you. I mean, I geeked out. I mean, come on. Stone Cold's my favorite wrestler of all time. So for him to be part mm-hmm. of this show, I was super happy. How about you? Well, we we briefly talked about it before we started recording, but we we all three of us came to the conclusion that you can't do a dark side of the ring on Brian Pillman without talking about with uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. You know, because Austin was not only close with him, but I mean the Hollywood Blondes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Pillman's first real feud in WWF at the time was with Austin. Yeah. And. Uh, I mean, Brian's career was cut short, but, you know, you, you'd have to be blind not to see the guy's potential. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I mean, realistically, Austin's the, the first person you think of when you think of Brian Pillman to interview. Other one, yeah. Everyone else is, you know, C, D, E, F on the list. <laughs> Austin's yeah, yeah. A and B. Yeah, yeah, totally. It, it, it's like number one. I mean, uh, unless they could... Uh... God, I'm, like, I'm trying to think who else possibly could it be. I mean, obviously, Brian Pillman I mean, Jr. has been active and uh, retweeting yeah. a lot of stuff. So I would love – he's probably going to be well, on there talking about his dad. But, I would, um, would it surprise me to get his wife, Melanie, on uh, – yeah. if you remember the Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which would be interesting. Just Maybe Kevin the, Sullivan. Pillman, Sullivan, Flair, Arn Anderson. Yep. Uh, Jim Cornette. Jim Ross. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I'm curious how many people can they get? Because I think people who currently work for WWE don't make appear- are allowed to make appearances on Dark Side of the Ring. So it has to be like non WWE employees. So well, that's why well, all Jim- the people I just listed. Yeah, <laughs> and, so, and, that, and that's why I'm curious is like how many of them are they able to get going to be able to get on? I mean, Jim Ross is okay because he's with AEW now. Cornette, he's, he's done stuff. Cornette, he's done stuff with them in the past already. So, but Stone Cold is the biggest one. Yeah. So, Dustin, 
Dustin Rhodes. Dustin Ooh, Rhodes. Yeah. yeah. I totally forgot about him. That's that'll be a good one too. Uh yeah. I, I'm looking and forward then Marlena, to Marlena or Terry Reynolds. There Terry you go. Reynolds, they yeah. they they, actually they, had a relationship. Yes, they did. That wasn't just storyline. Yes, really? yes, they yeah. did. Yes, they did. Terry when, and yeah, and Brian Pillman dated when they're in WCW. Yeah, in the I 90s. had no idea about the nineties. Yeah. Oh my god, I knew about that. Oh wow. All righty then. So uh, it's gonna be good. I'm looking forward to that. So um, it, I'm excited it just because. And I thought I saw something on Twitter, but I was trying to look for it. It said like it was going to be a two-parter, and I was like, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I was like, no. I, I, I didn't. I was like, I really? Didn't, that. If yeah. it's going to be two, two, uh, two episodes like uh, Chris Benoit's story, but I'm excited just to hear obviously his life, you know, before wrestling NFL, mm-hmm. and was he playing Canada as well? He played Bangles. in the CFL. Yeah, the CFL for the, um, I think it was uh, the Calgary. Uh, and team. I mean, I, I I definitely would like to hear Brian Pillman Jr. You know his story on things, even though he was so Brett, young. Bret Hart. Oh, Bret Hart. Yeah, absolutely. the Hart Foundation. Oh Duh. my god. <laughs> Duh, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, he was trained by Stu Hart. Yeah. Well, well, hopefully they can get him on because he was on the first season, and then Evan, when I talked to him last year, I guess Bret they wanted Bret for season two, but they couldn't get him on or something. I forgot there was a little bit of a miscommunication. Might have just been a scheduling thing. So because I. That was my one thing with season two with the Owen Hart episode that Brett wasn't on there. That was my one little critique of maybe like, Bruce Hart. He's you know he he knows Pillman. Yeah, so maybe yeah, some people in the Hart from family. the Calgary Stampede days. So yeah, I'd be great. I mean, obviously, yeah, the, the Hollywood Blondes, their story, their time there in WCW. Then Pillman got a gun on Raw. Yeah, but then also just the Hart Foundation. I wonder if they'll talk about the the match, you know, in Canada on the In Your House uh, pay-per-view. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking a lot forward. Of, a, lot of, a lot of content to talk about. Yeah, totally. Um, so uh, Dark Side of the Ring, as far as the premiere date, has been announced yet. But I saw they did tweet out it's going to be 14 episodes, so their longest one to date. Mm-hmm. Uh, PW Insider did report. So Brian Pillman. The WCW New Japan event in North Korea. Yeah. Nick Gage and the Smith family are all going to be episodes. Ooh. Um, Nick Gage? Oh, yeah. okay. The, the I know who, uh, yeah, no, no, no. I know who uh, he is, but he had the bank robbery. I, yeah. 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 Is that yeah. what happened? Yeah. He got arrested or. Yeah. yeah. But uh, also uh, with uh, David Arquette, I mean, you know, the most recent yeah. big thing. So yeah. there, there's a lot of material. I mean, I, mean, I guess gonna, it's going to probably fall in the same lines like with the new jack episode yeah so probably get like a hardcore wrestler <laughs> an episode for yeah you know spread the wealth as far as the different uh styles of styles professional of wrestling, wrestling. Yeah. yeah so uh but anyway I- i'm excited i know dark side of the ring crew that if you follow them on social media they've been busy filming stuff so hopefully uh i know it's usually springtime when the seasons drop so uh, i'm looking forward to hopefully in a couple months we'll get like a trailer and uh official release date premiere date but uh Mm -hmm. i definitely would love to watch them and hopefully do some reviews for them so i'm looking forward to it so uh awesome stuff there all right let's move on over to this week in wwe first up monday night raw a lot happened in this episode and uh so much we'll just focus on the highlights here but uh early on monday morning news came out wwe officially announced this which i was super shocked by that wwe champion drew mcintyre tested positive for COVID-19. So obviously he's home quarantined for the next couple of weeks. Hopefully he'll be fine and ready to go for um, Royal, Rumble. Royal Rumble for his match against Goldberg. So uh, Richard, your thoughts on that morning, just seeing the announcement. I mean, I think it's like the first time they really publicly announce a superstar. Having well, you, COVID. Have to, you have to get the superstars permission to announce something like that. Number one piece of HIPAA laws. So yeah. Uh, I, I thought had the way they handled it and the way he handled it was extremely professional. Yes. Mm-hmm, um, you know, him coming out and saying that he didn't, he doesn't have any symptoms. He's one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Asymptomatic. Yeah. Yeah. And if you think about it, the timing's really good for him because he's not going to miss the Royal Rumble. Cause if he misses the Royal Rumble, it's not the, the mm-hmm. wrestling storyline of uh, you have to defend your title within 60 days. So you can't strip him of the belt. Yeah. You just have to move it to a raw or whatever. So Yeah. It's uh I, I I like I said, when WWE made his announcement, I think it was the first time they made a public announcement of someone currently active on the roster having COVID. So like you said, they must have got permission from him. He must have been like, you know what? Okay, it's okay. Go ahead, talk about it. Maybe from his mind it, it, it standpoint, it's like 
a role model, I guess, or, or a spokesperson kind of, as we saw in Raw, it was almost like a PSA he cut saying, reminding people like, hey, please be safe, social distance, wear a mask, mm-hmm. be smart out there. He wanted to open the door. For so, that. yeah, so I think I, in some ways that he wanted helps, to do that. I think it helps him, too, to an extent. You know, he's still the face of the company. Is a baby he's face. Got, yeah, face. He's got the belt. Like, Roman Reigns might be in the headlines because he's a heel right now, and that's what people wanted, but, like, Drew McIntyre is the guy right now. Mm-hmm. Like, yes. don't don't get me wrong. Roman Reigns is a bigger name because he's been around a little bit longer. Yeah, uh, in the in that main event scene, but like Drew McIntyre is getting that push right now. Where he's, yeah, he's yeah. the guy. Yeah. So, um, I you know, kudos to Drew McIntyre for giving the okay to go public with this and really kind of stand up and be like a spokesperson on behalf of WWE and just remind people be safe. Like we're we got to get out of this we got to work together we're almost in the home stretch of like ending this pandemic but in order to do so we all have to be smart and healthy so i really respect that drew mcintyre and so hopefully you know if we have opportunity to talk to him again real soon i would love to kind of just praise him for that personally and just thank him for you know being brave i mean there's a lot of people who who get it and want to be very private about it rightfully so it's your own health you have every right to be private um it's interesting because I think a lot of public figures who who have it, everyone expects them to be upfront and announce it, and then everyone's like speculating how they get it, Ooh, what do they do to get it. So it, it's it creates a lot of just unnecessary gossip and drama. So for Drew to kind of just jump in front of it and announce it, all cool by me. So yeah. um, we started off the show. So I think because of that. Raw was rewritten very last minute because he was supposed to be in the main event taking on Randy Orton defending the championship. Another match here, a rematch between their long feud from uh, the last like six months. Um, and I think there were some uh, there was rumors some other people because of this were not going to be able to be on the show tonight. So my big takeaway from Raw this week was there was a lot of superstars doing double duty for the night. We saw a lot of people doing multiple matches. And like I said, we'll, we'll go through just quickly list off some of them as we go. Um, but I do want to give praise also to Triple H. It looks like he was the big savior of the night. Like he yeah, probably jumped star on. Power. Yeah, he jumped on a plane, went down to Tampa Bay to to be on this episode of Raw. So he comes out, cuts a promo. Randy well, Orton cuts him off. They go back and forth here, and he challenges him for a match. It's funny though, because I thought of it the same way you just did, where it's like jump on a plane, get down there. But it's like that's no different than you or I jumping on an airplane to go to Los Angeles. Like it's not yeah. that far. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's an hour flight, and he's got a, it's his own personal plane. So. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. He's got his dad or his father-in-law's private private jet, or WWE have private jets for all the executives. Yeah. So, um, but my guess, if I remember correctly, I think WWE superstars have to go in the day before to the facility or wherever the shows are at, get tested. I think there's two types of tests. One that takes like less than 24 hours, or one you can find out that day. So I don't know what they currently use right now. But my guess is either maybe on Sunday or Monday morning, Drew got tested, found out he's positive, and then probably Triple H is like, all right, I'll jump on a plane and go down there and help out. So I, I thought that was just cool. It really seemed like I interpret that as Triple H was trying to save the day and help put something together for Raw very last yeah, minute. Yeah, that worked. It yeah, worked. absolutely. So uh, well, uh, what's, what's funny to me, too, is when you look at everything that happened on Raw, it was actually a pretty decent Raw. Like, it, it didn't feel super long. We got good matches, but mm-hmm. like we got stuff that we don't see every week. Yeah. It's, uh, and no, and now the big thread was like, so Randy Orton challenged, um, uh, Triple H for a match and Triple H initially, initially said no. Cause like, what does he have to prove at this point? Rightfully so. But, uh, and then throughout the night, the big theme was, uh, Randy Orton was like trying to get him, convince him to do it. And then so Triple H finally said, yes, I'll do it. And so, I got excited, but I was kind of curious how uh, Triple H was going to look in this match. Because was this his first match since uh, Saudi Arabia? I think so. When yeah. he hurt himself. Yeah. So kind of what shape he was going to be in. So especially it was last minute because we're so used to Triple H. If he wrestles like once a year, he, he, he's he been vocal. I think Undertaker, you know, it takes like a month or two to really kind of get in shape, get the look down and as we saw in the main event not to jump ahead already but you know he kept it simple with the with the jeans and a motorhead shirt on so uh you know since it was so last minute he wasn't able to probably be in top shape that he's used to or what us the fans expect to see from him so um 
but nonetheless, uh, uh, well, so we'll talk about the main event specifically. What happened afterwards? That was pretty awesome. Uh, but something we also want to talk about. See, we see uh, uh, Charlotte Flair and Ric Flair once again. <laughs> we've seen this before, having a little bit of uh, uh, father daughter issues right now. Um, be on the same page. So, um, following the, the the events from last week's Raw, we see Lacey Evans take on Charlotte Flair here. Good match here, back and forth. Charlotte cut a promo before the match and said, sorry, I was a little bit out of character last week. I get frustrated. I'm very competitive. Didn't mean to like yell at my dad, and I, but he's home. I, I, I need to interject really quick. I yeah, love on. that WWE is doing these interviews on the way to the ring thing. You do? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, because it's, it's, you know, they're the quick 30 seconds or less promos and then hit it to the ring. Like, it fills up space really well in the show. Didn't mean Gene Okerlund used to do that? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or they would do it after the match. But I like it on the way to the ring before they're all winded and they forget their lines. It's like, you know, hit hit your lines here and then go out and do it. So So that's the thing was like, you know, Charlotte said in that promo that her dad's at home. So I'm like, okay, cool. So no Ric Flair. And then halfway during this match, we see Ric Flair come out, woo, down to the ring and. He's more or less just in Lacey Evans' corner. Yeah. I mean, he was helping her. and Seduced yeah. by a woman, Ric Flair? What? <laughs> God, I mean, it's like... you got to be kidding me. You don't say. Well, I, also, <laughs> I, I liked it. It was funny in the promo. Charlotte said that uh, she's used to seeing women hit on her dad. Yeah. <laughs> God, imagine, imagine Charlotte when she was probably like 10 years old, like out to a restaurant, maybe like some women hanging, hitting on Ric Flair. We oh, want your God. autograph. We want your autograph. sign my chest. <laughs> I'm sure she has plenty of real stories. If she was able to like do a shoot interview and talk about that stuff, that'd be great. Yeah. But um, this match here was good. I mean, it, it's funny because I remember when Lacey Evans first got called up, everyone's like, oh, this is one of Vince McMahon's types. That's why she got called up so fast out of NXT. So yeah. I really feel it's like Charlotte Flair and like Charlotte Flair's eventual successor going out of here. It's like twins going out well, in this there's, match. Yeah. There's been two dream matches for me. I, I My only concern is I don't know if Lacey is ready to be in the same league as Charlotte, but the more she works with Charlotte, the better Lacey's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. But L- Lacey and Charlotte's a match I've wanted to see for a while, you know, down the road, but I've, uh, that and Bianca Belair and, and Charlotte, just because of the athleticism mm-hmm. oh, and yeah. the sizes, because we're not used to seeing women the same size as Charlotte. So yeah. usually mm-hmm. Charlotte's towering over someone. And we got to see this week, yeah. someone yeah. of equal stature, someone of equal stature with the, uh, the great flair. So uh, I think Lacey Evans' uh, flirty ways really <laughs> convinced He's Rick. So handsome. The internet up. loved it. The internet. Well, well okay. So here's the thing. It. So we see, uh, you know, then the match and Charlotte's trying to pin Lacey. Rick lives Lacey's leg up onto the rope to break the pin. And at the very end, uh, Lacey's pinning Charlotte, or uh, Charlotte's ready to suplex Lacey over the ropes. And. As she's doing that, Rick trips Charlotte and holds her leg down, yeah. and Lacey gets the pin. So he helped Lacey have to defeat his own daughter. They're walking out. Dirtiest cel- player in the game. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Charlotte Flair, you do not uh, screw over the dirtiest player in the game. Even if he's your dad, He, no one is safe in Rick Flair's world. So yeah. I definitely enjoyed that aspect of it. But. Afterwards, you know, they're in the ring or in the backstage walking together. And Lacey even said, I'm going to change at the hotel room. So I was like, Ooh. you know, you know, what would be great is with without any sort of notice whatsoever. Yeah. And and they just keep doing this the same way that they did uh, Lana through the tables. Yeah. And they have, you know, their final big, big match together down the yeah. road. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. whatever. And Hogan comes down and chases off Flair. <laughs> I can see that. that be great. That would be funny. <laughs> Hogan comes, but like I, I, I forgot where I saw it. Someone said it was like, uh, is this like Anne Nicole and the old guy she was with? I mean, is this? Oh yeah, the Howard this, guy. Is this a situation? I mean, we know WWE likes to kind of go like the tabloid. Um, uh, uh, scandal type route. So is yeah. this what we're getting here? It's like Lacey's going to be dating an old man. Uh, you know, situation. Is that how Rick or Lacey's really going to get in Charlotte's skin is by dating her, her dad? Sure. Yeah. Why so, not? It's, it's so uh, I'm just curious. Where's this all going to go? I mean, we'll probably see this back and forth for the next few weeks and yeah. it's going to lead to some big blow off like a uh, Ric Flair in a cage, like hanging above the ring. Winner, winner gets Ric Flair. 
Yeah, that That's could work. The only thing I can think <laughs> of. So, uh, very interesting. Uh, another thing I want to touch on real quick. So, uh, uh, let's see. We saw, like I said, a lot of people doing double duties for the night. I mean, so, uh, you know, we saw Jeff Hardy take on Jackson Riker. Riker wins, and then he, uh, Jeff Hardy calls out Elias, and they battle. So, it's like an ongoing feud that's just never ending. Yeah. Uh, but next up, we saw Seamus and Keith Lee backstage having a, a segment. And it looks like they're on the same page again. They both agree. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, if Drew likes you, I like you. Mm-hmm. And Ms. Moore's interrupt, you know, do their thing and challenge them to a match. Yeah. And so match. Um, this match here, I, so I, I enjoyed the match. Yeah. You know, Seamus Keith Lee working mm-hmm. together. It's two big hosses on the same page. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that aspect of Ms. Morris at this point with their comedic ra- uh, routine, mm-hmm. just getting their ass handed to him. I enjoyed that. Especially the turnbuckle spot. Yeah, dude, that's spot was pr- great. As far as Keith Lee pushing Morris sitting into the corner and the turnbuckle exploded out. So, uh, I mean, it just charged at him like a rhino, you know, but Richard, what I wanted to ask you, so we see Seamus and Keith Lee win and then, you know, they're celebrating and they come out of commercial break and they're fighting each other. Like, no explanation. It's like, what the hell? They're fighting each other. And it leads into a match between the two. Yeah. I, I love the match. Like I said, Sheamus. Good is match. Good. I, Sheamus- I think this is just a different shade of Sheamus right now because we saw this with Sheamus and Drew McIntyre where they yeah. get into a fist fight, but then they're buddies again. Yeah. Well, it's- so, okay. That's the thing. So the match, I enjoy Keith Lee versus Sheamus. And I, you know, I love Keith Lee, you know, winning with the spirit bomb. Spirit bomb. Um, and then afterwards, they're looking at each other, and Seamus or uh, uh, Keith Lee puts the fist out, like, "Hey, fist me!" <laughs> so, so uh, hey, whoa, no. <laughs> so, uh, but Seamus wow. you know, hits hits the hand away, and then goes in for a hug and hugs him. So we got a bromance here. Yeah, I'm confused. Earned it's, his respect. He earned his respect. Yeah. So okay, they're on the same page. They have a match. Then after the match, they start hitting on each other, or you know, beating up each other. And then they have a match, and then they hug each other. Like it's just the back and forth. The the amount of emotions were covered in this multiple segments. It seems like a feud that would have lasted for a couple months, squeezed down together in like a, a forty five minute segment. Well, I'm gonna quote. We've seen Hulk- this before, though. Yeah, I'm gonna quote Hulk Hogan as Thunderlips, and he just simply said, "That's the name of the game." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's from WWE for yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how many? How, that's a Ring of Honor spot. How many yeah. times have you seen people beat the shit out of each other and then shake hands and hug after? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, I was just really kind of surprised how much ground they covered in their story in one episode of Monday Night Raw. That was kind of surprising to me. Uh, but then, you know, a lot else happened. I uh, just want to acknowledge. So, uh, T Bar took on Xavier Woods, but Xavier was by himself. Kofi Kingston was announced he has a broken jaw of some sort. So not sure how long he's going to be out for. He even did like an Instagram live and talked about his job really bothering him. So uh, I don't know if that, I think that happened at maybe at TLC or something. I'm not quite sure the timeline, but so he's going to be out for a while. So Xavier Woods really going to be by himself right now. Monday Night Raw. Um, and then uh, we see uh, Bobby Lashley take on Matt Riddle and then uh, Riddle take on MVP. Uh, and then we see AJ Styles take on Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak was kind of giving AJ crap about Garrett just automatically announcing himself in the Royal Rumble, but Drew Gulak has to like fight his way in. So, uh, you know, I kind of I side with Drew Gulak here. It's like a little bit of favoritism on Monday Night Raw. It's like <laughs> I do like the new ring gear for Drew Gulak. Like the I was orange, gonna say. very Lance Storm like. The yeah. orange pants. Yeah. 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 So, uh, but AJ With a lot of kick pads. So I wonder if that's going to be a new story as far as Drew Gulak trying to fight his way into the Royal Rumble. So that's going to be, gives him something to do for the next couple of weeks. He has to prove himself or to Adam Pierce why he needs to be in the Royal Rumble match. So a little bit of an underdog story here. Um, we saw Nia Jack, Shayna Baszler defeat Mandy Rose, Dana Brooks. So that on- was a surprisingly good match. I thought Mandy Rose looked better than I've ever seen her in that match, and I don't yeah. know what it was. It's interesting when some people d- just clicked. Dep- depending mm-hmm. on the matchups here, how certain people match up with other people and can perform with one another. That's always something kind of amazing well, to me. Yeah, I feel like Shayna Baszler is someone that doesn't really gel with anybody. Like her matches are all clunky, but there's an art to the clunkiness. Yeah, you know, like like. She's a fighter. She's a legit fighter. And yeah. she she wrestles like a fighter. Like, it's not, it doesn't look pretty, mm-hmm. uh, but she's a badass. But like Mandy Rose doing the kip ups and the knee strikes was just like 
everything was clicking with her to, on Monday. I will admit, to Mandy Rose, to her credit, I think in the last couple months, she's been a lot better in the ring. I think she's yeah. become more watchable, if yeah. that makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't she's know. always been watchable. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in ring wise, her in in ring work. Yeah, I've, I've definitely looks it, aside. Yeah, but she's definitely been doing a better job just with her work rate in the ring. So I'm uh, no kudos to her. Whatever she's been doing, her it's, and Dana are clicking. You know, that's yeah. the thing. It's funny because you you get you know just because she and Sonya were best friends didn't mean that they 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 had to be together forever. Yeah, and and that their in ring styles would click because. Uh, I, I don't know. The women's tag division in WWE is very bright for me right now. Yeah, it's very interesting kind of seeing how they're going to keep evolving that division to make it strong for the women's tag titles, which I was a little bummed. We didn't see no Asuka this week, but she will be on this week's episode of Raw, which we'll get into in a second. All right, so let's jump into the main event. So it was Triple H taking on Randy Orton. Triple H agreed to Randy Orton's uh, challenge. A, uh, 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 <laughs> Triple H comes out, like I said, the motorhead shirt on, the jeans on, look like he's ready for a street fight. And I was kind of worried, though, because I think when this match started, it was like less than 10 minutes in the show. I'm like, how are they going to get everything in in this short time span? But uh, this match, you know, they were brawling all over the place, mm-hmm. outside the ring. Yeah, I loved it. I was, I, like, did, I did, too. <laughs> for what it was, I, I loved it, too, because yeah. it's like, it was oh, like that's a good punch. Yeah, that's it was like a good a punch. The fist for flying. It was like five minutes, if that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. ma- it was barely five minutes. Um, and then uh, we see the the room get dark, yeah. and all of a sudden lights come back. And we see uh, Alexa Bliss in the corner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're missing. Well, Randy Orton in the ring. No, no, Triple the sledgehammer. He he grabs oh. the sledgehammer and then oh. it catches on fire. Yes, that's right. Yes, that was badass. Yeah, wow. I was just like, oh, well, that's different. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, he's gonna hit him with the sledgehammer. But when the lights come back on, Triple H is gone. Yep. So yeah. he magically disappeared. Mm-hmm. Randy's in the ring against Alexa Bliss, and he starts walking up to her. Yeah, and Alexa Bliss, you know. Like she had, she puts the glove under her her chin, and um, then all of a sudden she shoots a fireball into Randy Orton's My favorite face. All time angle in professional wrestling: yeah. the fireball. Yes, yeah. Keith Lee should have been out there. Like, no, don't do it. Don't let it happen to you too. Do you know why the fireball is so revered in wrestling? Go on. No, because that? The, the Sheik used to use a fireball, and at one point in time, there was a referee. I don't remember the territory. I think it was big time wrestling in Detroit, but yeah. he hit he hit this referee, Red Shoes Duggan, in the face. Yeah, and he had third degree burns all over his face. I've got the photo somewhere. I'll post it. But I've heard of Red uh, Shoes. Yes. Yeah, Duggan. Red Shoes Duggan. Yeah, and uh, not Red Shoes just, in New Japan. <laughs> yeah, no, this is before him. Yes, uh, but it legitimized the fireball forever since then. Mm-hmm. So now, whenever anyone sees it, because that made the cover of all the old school wrestling magazines, which is is burnt face and you can see the layers of burns and it's not you know hollywood makeup yeah um but so, uh terrible so yeah. after that anytime the fireball was coming people were really yeah. scared yeah so it went from him to lawler to sabu to shane kevin Douglas, sullivan kevin sullivan man Harry funk so uh jim cornett no, like I said, I yeah. love this. So there's a lot of fire on this uh, episode of Raw with, well, like you say, with Triple H with the sledgehammer, um, Randy Orton getting shot in the face. So a little bit of a payback because Alexa, remember the the thing was Triple H was saying, you know, he praised Randy Orton earlier tonight for not setting Alexa Bliss on fire. That was but, good. But uh, uh, so Randy Orton, I mean, is falling on the ground with like in pain, like oh, oh my god. Um. So we'll see what happens next. Like, is he Randy Orton going to be gone for a couple of weeks, recovering from this? It's it only adds more, which I love a layer to this story with with the Fiend and Alexa Bliss and uh, Randy Orton. So you know, fire has been like the real the real uh, takeaway as far as uh, what this this rivalry is. So. Yeah. It's all for good shock value. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So it's payback, definitely, for Alexa Bliss. Just the thought of Randy was going to burn her, but even, you know, set uh, <laughs> the fiend on fire a couple of weeks ago, or last month, I should say, and then he pooped his pants. We all know that's been well documented. Uh, well, he didn't poop his pants. It was purging fluids. <laughs> purging. 
Yeah, if you want to use the scientific terms. <laughs> for yeah. It. Yeah. Um, uh, but so looking ahead to Monday Night Raw this week, Alexa Bliss is going to be doing uh, double duty, it looks like. So uh, she's going to take on Asuka. And also she's going to have a segment with Randy Orton. So uh, I'm curious, Randy Orton, is he going to have like a face mask? Like remember when Undertaker had the face mask? Or he's going to have bandages wrapped uh, Yeah, around. I would yeah. love like a Phantom of the Opera type mask or something. Well, yeah. hey, they went all out for that last mask. Just imagine what they're going to do with the next one. I mean, it's like, yeah. how do you up that for The Fiend and Randy Orton whenever we'll the next match is? If it's going to be Royal Rumble or WrestleMania, whatever. It's like, how are they going to up that? So I don't know. Stay tuned. But yeah, no, uh, uh, a fun episode of Monday Night Raw. All right, jumping on over to Wednesday night. Let's talk about this week's episode of NXT. The big theme was the first round matches for the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, ta- tag team classic or the Dusty Classic. Yeah. Um, uh, we saw, you know, uh, Shotty Blackheart take on Candice LeRae, their rivalry still going. Yeah. Um, Indy Hartwell was constantly just, you know, interfering and ultimately caused Shotzi the match and Candice picked up the victory. So yeah. I like for the way, the, 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 wha- the, the whack, the faction, the way, you know, Indy is, or, uh, Candice is the mentor for Indy. Johnny is the mentor for Austin Theory. And right. so for every time the mentors have a match, the the protégés are out there constantly just interfering, getting involved. So that's definitely kind of the theme we Being see. Being the scapegoat. Yeah, I see the theme throughout this night. Yeah. Um, so we see Finn Balor come out for a promo, which... <laughs> I was kind of, he was staring at the camera for a really long time before he said anything. Yeah, that's it was pretty. He's a good looking guy. He's a good looking guy. <laughs> but he's, he's a like man. He's, he's a like holds the yeah. mic. He's like looking at the camera, like yeah, just staring. Yeah. I was like, maybe there was something on the lens. I was Cat like, just he's, 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 oh no, I just that's, spit on the camera. That's maybe there was spit on the camera. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Damn, I spit on the microphone. But anyway, Danny, just for the the clickbaiters out there, Danny just spit up on the microphone. <laughs> no, sorry. It's my microphone. No one else will use it. But he does that every time we talk about Bray Wyatt's dead body? <laughs> mm, and he pooped his pants. <laughs> mm. It's it's just post mortem changes, Danny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I still just amazed that your dad knows about bodies from New York. What? <laughs> Everyone said, from New York knows about bodies. When you said that, that it's the norm to them. <laughs> so, uh, but, but anyway, um, you know, Finn Balor, he's more or less uh, talking about Pete Dunne and said, you know, uh, as far as it looks like it's going to be his next competitor, Pete Dunne and... Um, and the tag champions uh, confront him. Uh, Undisputed Era come out um, for the save. Mm-hmm. Um, we see Johnny Gargano also a segment with him. He's uh, getting ready for his match with Dexter Lumis. <laughs> Austin Theory comes up with an envelope, and he's like, "I got, a, I got a letter for you." And he's like, "From who? From the guy? Which guy? The guy?" He's like, "Dexter Lumis is his name." Like, I love. The back and forth between the two of them, Austin Theory and Johnny Gargano. Yeah, but he opens up the letter, and no. you're not a fan of the two of them. No, you know the only way I like is a movie called The Way with Martin Sheen. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this, this group is. I mean, I, it works. It's just not for me. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Well, I, I like uh, so it's drawings that uh, Dexter Loomis did of Johnny and, and uh, Austin Theory. Austin Theory getting hit in the nuts. So. Yeah. I, I I really wish you know you know what it reminds me of is the, the original ECW version of the BWO. Oh yeah, because they're all capable, but they all are just so stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it's like ah, uh, you know, like oh god, there's a black cat and or the ladder is just like. <laughs> Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I am like, watching it, but every it, week it's just like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? Okay, let me ask you this. What What do you want to see happen to Johnny Gargano long term? Do you want him to be back to being babyface, Johnny Takeover? Or. Oh, it's the same for me either way. He's a heel to me because I don't like him. Oh, you don't like Johnny Gargano <laughs> in general? I like his takeover matches, but like him on a microphone drives me nuts. He is so really? white bread, whether he's baby face or heel. It's yeah. just his delivery. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. His delivery is the same for everything. It's just the content that he spews. Interesting. And, okay. his, and he always has that same facial the con- expression. The concussion face. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> During his matches. Yes. Yes. That, that's that's one, his way of selling it. As grave as that match was with Ciampa at uh, New Orleans takeover, 
he had the same face the whole time. As great as that match was, like the back and forth, it was the non-sanctioned match. Yeah, his non-facial reactions. <laughs> oh, I should post you got like it. the cornet face going there. <laughs> like literally, his eyes are just bulge, and he has mouth to open, and he's like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. it's like cornet face. <laughs> um, but so anyway, <laughs> this leads up to the match with Dexter for the night. Uh, so we saw the first match of the first round for the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. So it was uh, Grizzled Young Veterans. <laughs> My favorite tag team this, right now. Taking on Everrise. This, this was tremendous. Yeah. Everrise was, was, was stellar in this match. Wait, yeah. Okay. That's my main thing. Your favorite tag team, right, Danny? Awesome. I love these guys. Let me ask you this. So, <laughs> like, okay, like, I, you know, I seriously, I think Grizzly Young Veterans should and probably will win this tournament. They're I think my favorite. They probably should. But Everrise, my uh, great match. I mean, we don't need to go by beat by beat for this match. But my question it was is that close of, of who is going to win. Oh, exactly. So, yeah. no, but Ever Rise, I'm curious from your perspective, what do you think is long term their success? Like, what, like, I think at first when they came, they were like jobbers, comedian Where are jobbers. They from? Where are they from? They're from they're, Canada. They're from That's Quebec. what I thought. I just, yeah. <laughs> Tom, Tommy told me yesterday they're the Canadian Young Bucks. <laughs> oh, God, no. Don't no, insult no, them. I, okay. Okay. They're like, they're, they're like, the they're Rougeaus. like the Rougeaus. Yes, the yeah. Rougeaus. Yes. Like, like, I'm watching them, and I don't. I thought they were British because they've been on NXT UK, right? Yeah. I don't, no, no, no. I don't no, think no, so. Okay. Okay. So just NXT Prime. Kevin Owens so, knows them very well. Yeah. No. Okay. Because well, I thought they were they were from from England at first. And I'm just like God. They they remind me of the Rougeaus with the that the power bombs, mm-hmm. the, the all the double team moves they the kept doing. Like, they have. This is really good tag team wrestling because my my yeah. only critique with. Uh, the revival when they were in an NXT or WWE. I don't know what they do now, but great stuff. It's, it's it, well, that's what you say, but it just feels like it's so paint by numbers. You know, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. it's just this is going to lead to that, to that, to that, to that. And it's mm-hmm. just like if you if you've seen enough of their matches, you can predict how it's going to go. You can anticipate, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where this just felt like a melee and nearly a, a tornado tag team match with all the interference from the partners. This More was like an great. Australian style. Well, thing. so that's my thing with yeah. Everrise is like when they started, they were just jobbers yeah. and, and they had the comedy stuff. But then, you know, they started getting more screen time, showing their personalities. Their yeah. personalities are really fun. Like they're very vocal, fun guys. Um, very, they still haven't really won much, but yeah, very I, animated. Yeah. And, and, you know, they are in this tournament, they are kind of seen on a regular basis and, this and 205 Live, I believe. So I, I guess my question is, Richard, what is their ceiling in WWE? Like, in some ways, they kind of have that mainstream or uh, 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 Raw or SmackDown like, look. Mm-hmm. That, depends, show look. that depends on what they're going to do with tag team wrestling. Because if, if we're looking at... I feel like WWE took notice from what Bret Hart said a couple of weeks ago oh, yeah, with yeah, that yeah, interview. Yeah. Because since that interview, WWE's been pulling out tag team matches left and right that are really good. Yeah, like, street, I haven't street cared. profits. Yeah, street, well, not not even that. Just like makeshift, ta- like the the uh, Hardy Bros. <laughs> and, um, uh, um, Dolph and Robert Roode recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. the ladies tag team matches on Raw and SmackDown have been really good. And now we got the women. You know, going to have their own version of the Dusty Classic yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. So that was a big announcement as well. So I mean, for Ever Rise, like I, I think in some ways they kind of check off all the boxes of a tag team you might see on Raw and SmackDown on a regular. I mean, Plus, you look NXT at NXT UK has got a really good tag division as well. Yeah. So I mean, I, though, uh, now we're seeing the formula for NXT UK. If you're a tag team that's been around for a minute and wins, you will get promoted to NXT Prime, like Grizzle Young Veterans have been doing, Imperium. So, But for Everrise, they really are fascinating to me. Like, I, I, I'm entertained by them, Well, but like I, I, from a logistics standpoint, where is their career long-term with WWE? For their sake, I would say put them on SmackDown because Bruce Pritchard knows how to work with tag teams. Yeah. For the Grizzled Young, if you were to put the Grizzled Young Veterans on a show, I'd put them on Raw because of Zach Gibson's mouth. Yes, mm-hmm. he's yeah. such a loud mouth that they're gonna hate him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's very brash. Yeah, yeah. So he can sell himself. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're, and the benefit is that his, their work as a tag team is great. But you, but he well, can I mean, get them over as a tag team because he's such a loud mouth. 
But I, like, if Heavy Machinery can have like fun segments, like on SmackDown before yeah. they broke up, Ever Rise can easily do that same stuff. That's that's yeah. what I'm getting at ultimately. So I'm excited for their. I, I think they have a lot of room to grow. I would even say that um, your your other favorite tag team of uh, Drake Maverick and <laughs> Killian, Killian Dane, Dane. they they feel more mainstream right now than um, a lot of other than, tag teams. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Tag teams galore right now in WWE are thriving. Well, I'm just really shocked that there's 16 tag teams for this tournament. It's the biggest who's, one. Who's not thriving as a tag team right now? Uh, Every, everyone's doing really good. I mean, the Hurt well, Business. Well, I'm saying that what I like about the Dusty tournament, you look at the brackets. I mean, you yeah. can look on social media. They got people from 205 Live. They got people from Raw, like Lucha House Party. So they are digging a little bit to fill out the brackets, but I'm happy. It's 16 teams. That's a really deep uh, tournament to start yeah. out with. Because I think in the past it's only been like eight. But the eight. fact they doubled it this year, I'm like, wow. They are putting a lot of time. I'm, I'm excited for the next I'm guessing this is probably all going to lead to the finals, probably a takeover, which is February 4th. It's going to be uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. So I'm guessing for the next, uh, what, uh, five weeks, we're going to see a lot of great tag team wrestling on NXT because of this tournament, which I'm always looking forward to this beginning of the year with yeah. NXT. Like I said, not, not going on another tangent, but what I look about NXT, they really seem like they have a formula of things they want to accomplish each quarter. The Dusty Classic, um, uh, they have, like all these other tournaments. So, like every three months, they feel like they have different things. Yeah, like a big theme that kind of young classic. And, yeah, and, uh, all that stuff. So uh, classic. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, Grizzly Young Veterans. I mean, they ultimately win. So uh, I mean, I, I hope they go all the way to the finals. So surprisingly uh, great match. Yeah. Really, so, really surprising. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, see Johnny Gargano take on Dexter Loomis. So I was like, okay, now that you're not a big fan of Johnny Gargano, did you enjoy this? this was match? A, I really enjoyed this match. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was trying to figure out what this reminded me of because Loomis was moving around like gold dust slash Scott Hall a little bit. I mean, he yeah. he was showing some of his athleticism in this match. Like the kid and Gargan- and- Gargano was like, it was like watching, it was like watching Razor Ramon and one, two, three kid. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. a really like a uh, uh, hard hitting match. I mean, we know Austin Theory was you know constantly getting involved, uh, yeah. interfered, um, and then ultimately helped Johnny get the win over Dexter Loomis. And then Dexter Loomis put uh, the silencer on Austin Theory, and then uh, Kushida comes running in and uh, puts his uh, submission hold on Johnny Gargano. So both guys from the way are getting submitted out. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Kushida grabbed the, the North American Championship. And then threw it to Johnny, so it looks like that's going to be Johnny's next opponent. So, are you okay with uh, maybe Kushida eventually? Do you think Kushida has a chance to actually become North American champion? Not right now. No. See, that's the thing. I was like, he's been with NXT for like he needs, a year. He now. needs to prove to them that he can't get injured. That's the thing. It's always been stop and go with him for the last year with Kushida. Same and thing with Kenta. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of shocking or surprising just how much well, things have been kind of similar between the two of them. But I will really, I, I really want Kushida to do well. And I, I don't know if he should go after the Cruiserweight Championship or the North American Championship. But I mean, I want to see Kushida be successful in NXT. But I feel like every time they kind of potentially give him the ball, he seems to drop it, unfortunately, with an injury like that. So it's going to be interesting to see where uh, Kushida, how this. I anticipate Johnny's going to win just so he has another victory under his belt defending mm-hmm. the championship. So he's not like a one and done situation yeah, now. Just an, another successful title defense. Yeah. So uh, be excited to see. The, it's going to be a great match. You know it, though. Uh, I really want to ask you. So the sit down segment with Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. <laughs> what, I, what I enjoyed, though, was Ciampa kept asking Thatcher, what injury did you have that made us push off the fight pit match because i think he wants to know so in yeah, his so match he, he can, can go after isolate yes, it. yes. but yes. that's your being smart and I, no, i'm not going to tell you so you have to feel him out mm-hmm. what, what do you think it is like he's raising no his arms i mean it's like a shoulder or something i don't know could like, be could, could be. be anything but uh so we're gonna get that fight pit match next week so i'm looking forward to that um something i'm <laughs> Okay, so we see the big debut of MSK, formerly the Rascals from Impact Wrestling. They take on um, uh, uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott and, and Jake Atlas. Jake Atlas. 
I'm I'm super excited. Like, what do you think of the debut? Because what I'm getting at is, I kind of wish they would have did more vignettes and like I don't. build up. I don't. I'll tell you why. Okay, I'll tell you why. I did not like them at Impact. They were one of the things that made me not want to watch Impact. I don't know. They were just like I had the same thing with EC3 at Impact. Like, there's certain guys that I don't know if it's because they give these guys so much freedom there or whatever, but like it just felt felt too silly. Like, oh look, Mm. we're the fun guys that can do flippy shit. And we watch. I watch this and it's like watching two completely different people. Mm -hmm. Like it just, for some reason there's something about, you know, you're there to work. You're, you're here to get yourself over and work. You're not here to show me your personality on a day to day basis. And like Cameron Grimes, his personality all day, but he can back it up in the ring all day too. I miss Cameron Grimes. I know he's hurt, right? Yeah. Yeah. Injured. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm watch. I watched this, and I'm just kind of like I. I've, I've seen these guys probably two dozen times, and I feel like this is the first time I'm actually seeing them work. Mm. It, okay. I don't know what it was, but I just thought this was this was really well done. Yeah, the match was great. I mean, I love great when match. they do uh, uh, when um, that that jumping back the, moonsault and moonsault then he shoved them and pushes. Them. I love that spot. That's so creative. A way of working together and uh uh that every time they did that impact i loved that i didn't watch you know i didn't watch impact a lot but the match who's, i did see with them was great who's the other guy from the rascals is he okay. coming no Trey um, miguel his, That's his, name. his status is unknown there's been a lot of back and forth triple h kind of had a, a comment that said like oh he wasn't serious or uh i'm paraphrasing here but like wasn't committed to them. That's why they didn't sign him. Then Trey Miguel says the reason he didn't sign is he has like a family, someone, I think his family is sick or something. So he's dealing with that, unfortunately, right now. Um, I'm poison. not quite sure. <laughs> it, 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 see, they're all the, like, they're not being, they're talking in, um, uh, not hey, talking to, riddle. <laughs> I don't know. Like, but I, I, yeah, I don't know what the exact reasoning is, but, um, these two guys, they took the opportunity to sign right away. So I don't know what Trey Miguel, Good. what's his that's, status? That's what you should do. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. So a lot of people are kind of complaining that, you know, MSK are going by MSK and not the Rascals. And so it's like, why didn't it's, they just keep It's not using... the Rascals without the other guy. <laughs> okay. And then they changed their name. So uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, I had the names written here, down. Here, let me let me ask you this. Had had let's say you you had the option. If yeah. Gallows Anderson and AJ Styles came, came into WWE as the Bullet Club. Is it <laughs> the Bullet Club? Is it because it's just the three guys? Yeah. Well, you yeah. Yeah, it's just the three members that were but, once in the Bullet Club. But if they could call them the Bullet Club, is that fair to call it the Bullet Club if it's not the whole Bullet Club? Uh, I mean, they're the most recognizable names or people. But well, I mean, about, New Japan what about Finn are... Balor? What about the Young Bucks? What about so and so? It's like with this, there's three guys. It's like having yeah. the Freebirds uh, be Michael Hayes and uh, uh, Jimmy Garvin. It's like that's not really the Freebirds. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's well, I guess. What I'm getting? Well, no, I, I, I just, it just doesn't make sense to call them that without the third guy because that's what they're known for. It's the third bird, three person group. Okay, as the Rascals. I, I, okay, I guess the other thing too, people were kind of joking about their name. So Zachary Wentz is now going by Nash Carter. <laughs> so I get sick name. I, Desmond Xavier is now going by Wes Lee. So a lot of people are like, how did it come up with these names? It, it, the it's good it, names. Well, it good doesn't, names. I mean, Nash Carter, I think of Nash Bridges, which our well, dad loves Dan watching. E and that's Tom E and See, I'm Rich E. This is in the click. <laughs> well, well okay. they probably have a phone book on standby, you know. Just, well, I, see, yeah. that's the thing. I was like, I would love to know how they come up with these names. So, like, I well, it's it's also NXT, so the, the names can change before they get moved. So, okay, a couple things. So, one, okay, you brought up a good point. Why they didn't go by the Rascal still because it's not all three members. So, yeah, since it's just the two of them, probably better have a fresh start. Just have yeah. a new name. Which I don't know. If, is anyone ever? Does anyone know what MSK even stands for yet? I don't know if they officially announce. It sounds like a dubstep. Like type group or something <laughs> no, like that. I don't know. But then also, um, 
so with their name change, it's very interesting to me, uh, you know, how they come up with these names. I would love to know the backstory. How did they, why didn't they keep the names that they used already in Impact that was recognizable? That's well, what the. I found what MSK stands for. Uh oh, what is it? What is it? Uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. Memorial. Uh, it's a cancer Sloan. center. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, MSK. I'm okay. looking at it right here. Oh okay, yeah, I you, saw you Google searched it. No, okay, yeah. no, but what I'm getting at is, uh, so I would love to know what MSK stands for. I would love to know how they pick these new <laughs> names instead of just using the names that everyone knows already from their time at Impact and on the indie scene. So a couple things, Richard. I would love to know what's in the, for with WWE. We know some guys that they well, sign. They get to keep on, their names. I think I found the right one. Uh, uh, this is Marine Strasskrupp Company. It's a German naval assault troop. <laughs> MSK. <laughs> That's the thing. Okay, if you know what MSK stands for, <laughs> tweet at us. We should put a poll out maybe on Twitter. What does MSK stand for and give different scenarios or, or uh, examples? <laughs> hmm. No, but I would I like. To... I like the German one. I think that's it. <laughs> No, but what I'm getting at is like MSK. They made the ShamWow. So no, but but um, f- for these guys, we've seen this plenty of times in the past where certain guys that they sign, they get to keep their names that they were going previously in other promotions, and then other guys when they come in, they got to change their name completely. So we see like you know Seth Rollins, he was Tyler Black. We see Samoa Joe, he gets to keep Samoa Joe. AJ Samoa Styles. Joe was Samoa Joe. The difference though is that AJ and Samoa Joe, people like that, had been around for so long that it was impossible not to know who they were. Exactly. So that's why I think the situation is if you're like fairly young in your career, you probably can. Uh, it's okay to change your name or for WWE, they're like, we, we're going to change it. But other guys who've been around probably for like 10 plus years, been all around the world. They change their name. Keith they, Lee. they can't change the name. Look, Keith at, look at Keith Lee because Keith Lee wasn't. A really a household name before wwe but he was getting around the world yeah yeah so, so i just find that fascinating when guys that they sign which ones get to keep their name and which ones don't keep their name like and daniel bryan yeah well brian Danielson. Brian yeah Danielson. exactly so it's always interesting to me i don't know I, richard have you ever thought about if you had an alternate name what would it be if you went to uh wwe if you were a pro wrestler uh, it'd be it'd be ross richards ross richards. that's good that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was thinking like, cause remember, you know, like there's always the joke of like, uh, the game, like the porn star name. It's either like your yeah. middle name in the street you grew up on or your pet's name in the street you grew up on. Yeah. Well, so. there's, I, I'll try to find them on my phone somewhere, but I've got these photos of people. This is before AJ and Samoa Joe went to, uh, WWE, but they're like alternative names if they go. And I remember AJ Styles was CJ fashion. <laughs> and, uh, I think Samoa Joe was Joe Samoa. Joe <laughs> Samoa, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> okay, yeah. so you'll be Ross Richard. Richards. Okay. Richards. Richards. Rich obviously at okay. Yeah, yeah. Ross yeah. Richards. Okay. Yeah. Um let's see. Should should I do pet You'd name be Del Danny. You'd be Del, Del Danny. Del Danny. <laughs> yeah. No, you'd thinking. be a luchador. Yeah. <laughs> Bret Daniel. Hart will love me. Yeah. Del Daniel. <laughs> I was thinking, okay. Del but, Daniels. Del Daniels. As, as a as a uh, as a kid, we had a, a pet named Max, a hamster. So maybe I'll be Max Pacific or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But uh, but no. Anyway, it's just like I said. It's always fascinating when someone debuts. If and why they get a name change, the new name, oh, like the rebranding. Look, that process is always fascinating. I didn't, I didn't know their names before they were even in WWE. So okay, like so, I, I had seen them and heard uh, uh, you know heard it before. I just. I, they didn't register with me enough to care to know their names. Yeah, so I'm excited, though. I mean, I, I hope maybe they can make it to the finals of this tournament as well. That would be kind of a good way to get them a big push right out of the gates as far as debuting with NXT. So uh, I'm really looking forward. I, I enjoyed their stuff that I've seen the Impact, and so uh, I'm excited to see yeah, what they can accomplish. Uh, but since they defeated Jake Atlas and Isaiah Swerve Scott, those two guys uh, had a shoving match in the, in the backstage area. Justin Carino was one of the guys trying to break it. I always pop when I see Justin Carino. Steve, Steve oh, see, Carino. He's, wait, Justin's his son, right? No. no maybe you're thinking of Colby. Justin Credible. 
No, Colby Carino. Colby Carino, oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting all my ECW legends mixed up. No, Steve Carino, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, Steve Carino. I quit this podcast. Damn, I'm sorry. I was like, just incredible. I, I fused the two of them together. Yeah. <laughs> it's the ultimate hardcore legend. A take on Terry Funk in a match. Taz Byron. Awesome is my favorite wrestler. <laughs> Taz, damn it. Raven Dreamer is mine. Oh, he's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Love damn that it. DDT. Yeah. <laughs> but uh but anyway seeing steve carino always in those like segments like breaking up the fights i enjoy that so much it's so ha- cool to see steve carino doing stuff with nxt but um but we see uh uh um uh, uh what's the, the big um the big guy um, oh. uh who broke up the the uh, the australian dude oh oh um the big dude. looks like bronson Bam Bam reed Bigel. bronson reed i was just about to say that so Bronson Reed comes out uh, and gets in the Swerve's face, and it looks like they're two of them are going to be going at. So I'm looking forward to that match yeah. as well. So that's going to be cool. Um, so yeah, Dusty Classics Women's were announced. So is it going to be only eight teams, or, or is it four? They only announced four teams so, so far. far. Yeah, yeah. So I hope they add some more just to make it a little more deep of a of a bracket. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Richard, we also saw Scarlett cut a video backstage. What language was she speaking? I was wondering that myself. I, 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 it sounds like she's from Transylvania or something. <laughs> I mean, the whole setup with the skulls and the smoke and I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask my boy. Yeah, go ask him right now. Send yeah, me a DM right DM now. DM him right now. <laughs> um, and then uh, we saw Zia Lee with a quick squash match. Yeah. Literally, she threw a right hand and a kick that ended the match. But I just kind of laughed. She threw the right hand, and the lady, this girl, Valentina uh, Perez. Perez, yeah. I don't know if she's just not that experienced, but she didn't really sell the punch. And even Vic Joseph took him like three seconds to react to it. He's like, he's like talking, blah blah blah, and you're like, oh, you see that right hand? Like it was like three seconds after the fact. I'm like, come on, man. But. uh um, it was funny, but uh, uh, you know, Zaylee gets the pin, and then uh, her uh, mythical leader at the top of the ramp, yeah. uh, you know, gave the command to beat the crap out of her. So she tied her in the ropes and yep. kicked the crap out of her. Yep. So it's uh, what you just sent it. Uh oh, and I was backwards. Oh, well. uh, I see it. <laughs> it's uh, okay. Uh, but no, it's cool though. Like I, I really dig what Zaylee's doing here. She's like this uh, repackaged like warrior yeah who's like has like that killer instinct but i just want to know will boa do any matches though manager yeah is boa is that his role he's gonna be a manager for her only i didn't get a manager feel i got like a, a motivation like he's there for her motivation not like yeah. they're a couple but like uh they're like yeah, soldiers in, in war Every I love this right now because everything about it just feels brand new and different. Like I don't know I don't know where it's taking us at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's cool. Well, okay, so for Zia Lee, like for Bo, they're both were so She's she's a uh Cobra Kai, right? Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's gonna be on the fourth season. Yeah. But, no, but but like they were so against the idea of being like retrained by they didn't want to be taken away by that older guy and be retrained. But now that they've been, you know, went through the the hell and back for the training process, they're now like badass warriors. So I, I would little like I would like some more uh, details on this story. Who is this person? Why were they so hesitant to follow them and get the follow this woman to uh, for their training? They were so hesitant to go there. So I like I said, I enjoyed this so far. I just want more stories. So it's definitely been a slow burn for this. Um, and the next up was the main event: Undisputed Era taking on Breezango. Uh, another match for the first round of the Dusty Tag Team Classic. Typical match here. I don't know about you guys, but I thought Breezango. Their body language was kind of weird coming to yeah. the ring. I I had that exact same thought, and I when I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, when we were going to do this, that they feel like two guys that when they get fired from WWE and they go somewhere else. Yeah, like they, they didn't feel like they were they're there. Yeah, like I, I listen. I know Brizango the way they usually come to the ring and how they kind of their body language. It plays into a crowd, the live audience there, and I get it. There's no live audience. Well, they have 
a handful of people there, but it's mostly, you know, virtually Thunderdome style. But it just really felt like they were going through the motions and didn't really seem that motivated unless they found out like two minutes beforehand that they were going to lose this match and they were just disappointed. But I just felt like their body language just looked like they didn't want to be there. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Time, it's time for them to go their separate ways as a tag team. Yeah. I always thought Breezango, treat them like uh, the Rockers. I have Tyler Breeze, super kick, Fandango. Fandango will be Mari Gennetti. Tyler Breeze can be the Shawn Michaels of the group and let them go on a, a, a t- solo tear. They are the 2010s version. Was it the Disco Knights? Disco Inferno and Alex Wright. Yeah, I remember them. Yeah. <laughs> because Disco and Alex could both wrestle, but they mm-hmm. both had silly gimmicks. You forget about the, the, the yeah. wrestling ability, but. Because the, they were just so entertaining. That's yeah. what Brazango's like. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. Like, was it Disco Nights or was it something? Was it a different name? I remember you had the two of them teaming up, but uh, but I mean, um, I just saying like, I just feel like when Tyler Breeze first came back to NXT, it was great. He seemed refreshed. He had some great matches. He had a takeover match not too soon after. So he seemed like. It was like the, that. He was the a perfect, dancing fools. The, the dancing, dancing fools. <laughs> That's what it was. Yes. But I'm just saying, like, he, he seemed remotivated when he got back down to NXT. And that was the prime example of, like, okay, if you're not going to be used on Raw or SmackDown, yeah. s- send them back to NXT and let them, like, get a, a, a refresher course, a jumpstart in their own career, remotivate them. But there was he, two things this week that, was, that reminded me, that, like, stuff like that. Yeah. One is here of, like, that's why they went back down because it's like, are they really better than the main roster? Like, the, the, I didn't see a main roster feel from that match. And there's something on SmackDown we'll get to when we get there that okay. I, I found eye opening. Well, no. So, what I'm saying is, I just really felt like this, it was an okay main event, but I really felt like everyone was kind of going through the motions. I wasn't so I, into it. I wasn't yeah. into it at all. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, what happened the last, like, Three minutes was the best part, mm-hmm. but it was outside interference. But yeah, this match was okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it was what it was. So uh, Pete Dunn and um, Oni Lorcan, Danny Birch come out, uh, attack uh, Kyle O'Reilly, bring up against the pole and attempted to kick him. But Finn Balor comes in, makes the save, uh, attacks him. And then uh, Undisputed Era, they were getting beat up and so they couldn't help out right away. But ultimately, they recovered, still beat Breezango, and then helped make the save with Kyle O'Reilly afterwards. So, Breezango, man, these guys totally jobbed out this match as far as Undisputed Era, even though one of their own was getting attacked, they still had time to beat them up, get the victory, and then go beat up the bad, other bad guys outside. So, Undisputed Era looked really strong here. Tyler Breeze and uh, Fandango, they looked, you know, total. Yeah, it was not a good night for them. So, I don't know if they were like, man, we're going to lose, and Undisputed Era is going to look super strong tonight. So, I don't know. It just... <laughs> <laughs> it just uh, it was not a, a good night for Breezango, so I don't know where they go from here. If uh, you know, do, do they go the separate ways? Like you said, that might be the best bet at this point. Maybe I don't know. It was just not a good night. I, to me, it's like Tyler Tyler Breeze should go back to the old gimmick, even with the short hair, diet hair, blonde again. Yeah, and and Fandango should find another partner. I think I I, I think he's valuable. I just don't see them as good tag team partners anymore. Yeah. It's, it's grown. The trans it's, course. Yeah. 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 Which is fine. It happens. So, uh, but nonetheless, do you think Finn Balor is going to, since, uh, um, I don't know. I was, when I saw that, I was like, they probably took out Kyle. So now they can do a six man tag team match with, uh, Kyle Roderick and Finn Balor against those three. Cause I think we're building right now towards Pete Dunn and, uh, Finn Finn Balor. Balor. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be probably Finn's next opponent to defend the championship. And that's Even though we see. saw Scarlett, her video package earlier in the night, she said Karrion is still going to go after Finn. But I, I very much, it's going to be very similar to what Keith Lee and Adam Cole were doing, where Karrion was kind of in the back lurking. Yeah. So I think Pete Dunn, Finn Balor are going to have their match pretty soon. And Karrion's going to be on the outside looking in, you know, lurking for that championship. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's like praying or, uh, 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 uh what's the, a predator. He's going to go after it eventually. Yeah. But anyway, I, a predator. I, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Have a seat. Please have a seat. <laughs> 
<laughs> so like, oh, Chris Hansen. But anyway, I, I uh, but like Bobby Fish is out injured. He had a tricep injury surgery after war games. So he's out for a couple of months, I think eight weeks. So do you think Finn Balor should be an honorable men, uh, member of Undisputed Era? Sure. Why not? Just fill out fourth, fourth member. Yeah. yeah. You should have friends. Yeah. Hulk, totally. had, Hulk had friends. He had Brutus. <laughs> yes. What yeah. were they called? The, the, not the Mega Powers. They were the um, uh, Mega. Oh. Oh, you know what I'm mega, saying? Yeah. They yeah. Saw, it was not. It was not yeah, yeah, it took on uh, Zeus and uh, Macho Man. That's right. So, uh, but anyway, like you said, I, I friend of Speed Era. It, it's just kind of weird, though, seeing them as baby faces, though. Like, I feel like the vibe's a little bit different with them as baby faces. So, um, I, I'm still enjoying it, but. I really feel like this is their last hoorah before Raw or SmackDown so, yeah. or the Royal Rumble. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. All right, let's move on over to Friday Night SmackDown this week. Uh, dude, this show, I really enjoyed it, man. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Man, for they had five the matches. The King of Strong Style is back. Oh, my God. So, Oh, they were called the Mega Maniacs. Mega Maniacs. That's it. There we go. It. <laughs> there okay. we go. Anyway. Um, so... Opening match, Shinsuke taking on Jay Uso, which is uh, the fallout from last oh. week's episode where Jay super kicked Shinsuke and cost him the gauntlet, and they threw Adam Pierce on him. Uh, Shinsuke comes out to his old NXT music, so I guess he full blown babyface again. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. But okay, yep. as much as I love this, I'm all for it. Shinsuke being a babyface. What's the motivation though? I, I just from a story standpoint. Please explain. I think this was going to happen the sooner. Change of heart. Yeah. I think this was going to happen sooner because they wanted that pop with the crowd singing the music, you know, on his way to the ring. But we don't know when we're going to get crowds back. So I think that they did it right because, uh, man, I was I was so into this. I was just like his whole swagger and demeanor felt like it was. A oh, weight was lifted off to him. AJ. Yeah, and I think I mean I look I. I didn't hate what he's been doing at all by any means. I've loved his WWE run. He's been a champion for more than half of it. How many guys go up to the main roster and can say that they've been a, a champion of some sort three-fourths of the time that they've been there? So NXT champion, uh, U.S. champion, US champion Intercontinental Intercontinental Knock Champions. America. And uh, <laughs> uh, tag champion. So yeah. he's almost there. Uh, Grand Slam champion. He's almost there. So one yeah. day, hopefully, maybe. Uh, no, but great opening match here. I mean, come on, they're both just total pros. But I just, I just, I don't know if it's commentary or maybe Shinsuke in another promo or something. Just kind of explain himself why the change of heart. Why they jumped is- him. He's now the baby face de facto because they jumped him and cost him a match because he worked his ass off to try to win the match last week. I think yeah. I don't think anything even needs to be said based off of the actions of Roman and Jay last week. So. Nakamura coming out and uh, since he's just on the op- since the yeah. bigger heels of SmackDown took him out, he's yeah. just naturally just converted over on Magley. Yep. Well, that's then- Attitude Era One Hundred and One. <laughs> he just seriously, just but he doesn't it. have to change his character at all. He just changed his music back to what it was and, and be the, focus- the kickass that he is, and who he focuses his attention towards, which is now other yeah. heels. Yeah. Well, and then so halfway during this match, we see Cesaro come out. I like how Michael Cole was like asking, like, where were you? He guys asked it last week and you weren't there. This, He's like, this is that other thing I was talking about. Okay. What's that? Go ahead. Everyone wants Cesaro to be the world champion. He should be the world champion. Blah, blah, blah. The internet yeah. wants this. The, for years they've been saying that. Yeah. Yeah. And they gave him a lot more mic time this week than they've ever given him. Yeah. And I thought he dropped the ball really poorly on the mic. Yeah, he's uh he's he's not he forgot the best his lines. He 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 couldn't but, form a thought the way I'm speaking right now. <laughs> well, even just so, the segments with Daniel Bryan backstage, exactly have between not been that, that strong. Between that and the announce team when he joined them uh, at the announce table, it just felt weak. Like he like he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for their questions, and it just was like it took me out of it a little bit on his part. Well, I just wonder if it's still like a language language barrier. Just because no. he's cause, been here so long, so that's just long. it. Yeah, it's like I would think he's been here long enough. He should be able to kind of react more quickly in a natural yeah. conversation. Yeah, 
I mean, but, Nakamura and his little uh, verbal bit with Jay beforehand was a lot more clear than he was two years ago when he debuted. He said, your cousin is the big, big dog. dog. Yeah. You, you are just his little puppy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But that. even that, if he did, did that two years ago, it would have been a lot more softer. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it was just like, I don't know, he felt more comfortable. Uh, to me, it's really funny how successful the Japanese women have done opposed to the men. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. When when I feel like the mass media knows who the men are and they don't know who these women are. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it, it's so for me, Cesaro comes out and you could tell like he's still a heel, but they're asking like, where were you? He's like, oh, you know how big this stadium is. By the time I got out here, it was already done and you were gone and everything. So I did make the save. And he says, I'm going to enter the Royal Rumble. And if I win, uh, I'm going to go after that championship. Oh, which championship? Roman Reigns, of course. He's like, why are you going to do it? For the championship and to take on Roman because he beat up Shinsuke Nakamura. So it's it's still about him. He still wants the goal. The motivation for entering the Rumble is for the championship, the universal uh-huh. championship. But then he's like, oh, yeah, but also because he beat up Shinsuke Nakamura. So that's I'm going to help out my buddy. So he's still trying to be the good guy as far as every, all his actions are because uh, he wants to be there for his buddy Shinsuke. But at the same time, it's still about himself. So uh, and we'll see more of that throughout the night. But oh, let's let's move on to the best part of the whole week. Go on. Baron Corbin. Oh, before that. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, oh. Okay, so we see uh, it was announced Liv Morgan take on Natty in a match. Um, Liv Morgan comes out with the Riot Squad, but Billy Kay comes out in full blown, I guess in her mind, punk rock look. She had the plaid skirt. She, she went on Twitter and said that she's always been punk rock. Her first theme song was by Avril Levine, and she said she she said she's been to a punk show. She saw Fall Out Boy once in concert. Oh. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Like, I mean, listen, I, I think it's funny. I, it, it's funny how she's trying to be punk rock, but it's like she's failing at it and she knows she it. Hot. She looks hot. She looked great. She definitely looked like a Hot Topic employee, you know, with the look. And uh, But, you know, Tommy Ooh. and I, we've been to many underground punk shows in the early what? 2000s. So we what know what. She, what did she call mosh pitting? Mosh. Um, um, <laughs> Uh, pushing. Put mosh pushing, I mosh, think. Mosh, mosh pushing. pushing. Yeah. Like, in Australia, we call it mosh pushing. It was so spinal tap. Yeah. It was so good. It's slam dancing. And but then no. that, the, the way she cost the match at the end where she, like, did a spit in the ring. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, I was so entertained. But I love she's trying to give, you know, like, the devil horns. You know, she's, like, looking. Up, looking upside down. Uh, but she's telling them, like, look like, at me. Look at me. I'm doing it. Look, like, I'm Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But, oh, yeah, she also she had, she tried to have a tough look on her face. And just, but God, Corey Graves, she's money. I yeah. love Michael Call called her Billy Vicious, you know, like Sid Vicious, <laughs> yeah. Sex Pistol. So, yeah. uh, but Corey Graves is like, hey, uh, Michael's like, hey, Corey, you're a punk rocker. You can you uh, like asking for his expertise and uh, Billy Kay's trying to like, oh uh, yeah, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. So she's such golden man. I. Listen, I know. I told you the money's on her. The yeah. money such, is her. It's, yeah. it's six months ago, if you would have said out of the two iconics who was going to be the star, everyone would have said Peyton Royce. Yeah, except for me. I know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been documented. But look, and there's and that's not saying anything against Peyton Royce because she's she's funny herself. Yeah, and she's extremely talented in the ring, and she's gorgeous. Yeah, it's just that Billy Kay has always been like the. The hilarious one, like, charismatic, yeah, yeah. Well, not even that. It's just like when during their tag team matches, uh, she, when Billy was out on the apron, she would just be squawking. Is the word I use for it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. She'd be squawking at Billy and just yelling through the entire match. <laughs> like I said, it's, she's it. like Sherry Martell. Yeah, so yeah. that's the thing. I was like, she could really be a manager. Like, however long she wants to wrestle, that's fine. But, like, she could really transition to a fun manager. She can do anything. She could be a general manager. She could be an announcer. She can She can be anything she wants. Yeah, All so, right. no, I'm, I, 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 I love this, what she did. It's uh, it's so much fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. A uh, question I do have for both of you guys. So, we saw Baron Corbin take on Rey Mysterio. Dominic Mysterio was out there. Yeah. Dominic uh, tried to get involved, but ultimately Baron picked up the victory, defeated Ray. Dominic was upset and wanted to go after him, and Ray's like, "No, stop it, stop it." And we see the backstage segment where he's like, 
you don't just a big guy like that. You just don't go running after him. And Dominic's like, well, dad, you're the giant killer. You you're used to this. Let's go games like, no, this is different. We've got to have a better strategy. And he says, I have someone to help us out. So my question is, who is this mystery partner that Rey Mysterio is alluding to that he's going to get to help stop Baron Corbin? It's got to be K dog, right? Which uh, Conan? Conan. <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking. Okay, could it be Buddy Murphy? Billy Kidman. Billy, Kid- Billy Kidman. Disco. <laughs> Maybe Conan. it's Hoovy. Hoovy. Hoovy too great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Psychosis. All Hypnosis. the of you guys. He wasn't in the filthy animals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. I was like, who could it be? I mean, like the easy answer might be Buddy Murphy because already the attachment, like slash kayfabe. He's with Ray's daughter, but like, okay, let's dive a little bit deeper. Who could it be? Could it be Seth Rollins? The enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing. No. No, could early. it be maybe uh, Humberto? Is Humberto on SmackDown or Raw? I can't remember what he got drafted to. I don't either. Andrade. See, um, I'm trying to. I'm. I was trying to rack my brain with it, someone of larger stature. Could be Cain Velasquez. No. No. Could it maybe be Braun? Braun, Braun, maybe, but he's on Raw, right? Is he on oh, Raw? Yeah, Carrillo is on Raw. Okay, um, or the other thing, could it be maybe Damian Priest? He's been rumored to come to SmackDown. Ooh, yeah. So anyway, yeah. I just want to put it out there. It's like also, yeah. I'd like to put it out there that I think Damian Priest and Baron Corbin would make a pretty cool tag team. <laughs> Almost like one of the same kind of personality. Yeah, yeah. 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 But those. Yeah. those the finishing moves too would be pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, just food for thought to the clicksters out there who could be the, this mystery partner Sorry. that Ray's going to get to uh, help align himself with uh, the two of them, take on Baron Corbin and his Knights of the Lone Wolf. So just keep an eye out there, see what happens. Hopefully, maybe get an answer next week or so. Um, let's see. <laughs> I, I enjoyed Ding Dong Hello. The uh, I did too. Bailey segment. I didn't, I didn't want to, but it was it was done very very well. Well, I love Bailey comes out with the glasses, which uh, you know for us '90s kids, we grew up watching Sally Jesse Raphael. Yeah. They look cute on her. Yeah, I look great on her. I like Bianca Belair comes out and she plays along with it. Like uh, that. Ba- that made the segment. Yes. To me. Yes. Like like you have to go through the door and she goes, "Who is it?" And she pokes her head around the door and goes, Bailey, you invited me here. You know who it is. <laughs> yeah. And then she opens the door and then Bianca takes her uh, chair and it's like, ah, this is comfy. Yeah. And then uh, Bailey's like, all right, I'll stand. I keep my legs strong because I'm going to be in the Royal Rumble this year. So I really like this feud so far and the back and forth. So ultimately, it's going to lead to uh, a challenge next week. Uh, uh, like, a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a de- decathlon uh, or... Um, a obstacle gaunt- course. Obstacle Bailey's course. obstacle course. Bailey's obstacle I, course. Now, yeah. like, I know in the past, sometimes those moments can be kind of cringy. But if it's pre-tape, it should be a lot of fun. Because, you know, Street Profit, God. Viking Raiders, those were pretty fun. If, if they do a cinematic obstacle course, I'll be thrilled. Exactly. Have time to edit it, make it funny, all that stuff. Because, like, remember the one they did live with Sami Zayn and Bobby Lashley? That was kind of bad. Live on Raw. That I don't was, even remember that. It was see, so bad. That's, yeah, exactly. So I hope it's pre tape I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to their whole, uh, you know, just rivalry. Um, and it's, it's almost like a slow burn to their eventual match. Maybe we'll see something at, well, I did have a match last month, but I mean, as far as the rematch and where this is going. So maybe they'll have something at the Royal Rumble plant. I don't know. But anyway, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but dude, easily might have been match of the week. Cesaro taking on Daniel Bryan. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Man, Wait, that match. that head scissor takedown into an arm bar was or a cross space was nuts. Yeah. But also, when uh, Cesaro Daniel Bryan pulling out Lucha Libre, mm-hmm. a lot of fluidity throughout this match. But also, yeah. when uh, uh, Cesaro lifted up Daniel Bryan on the top rope and spun him in the air with that suplex, amazing. Like it was like almost like a corkscrew, like spun him around. Like just the, the the strength of Cesaro has always been amazing, but mm-hmm. this match, the back and forth, the uh, the technical stuff, the submission holds, the false finishes, all great stuff here. It really reminded me of like a Kurt Henning versus Nick Bockwinkel type match. 
Yeah, dude, it was great. I'm. Uh, uh, did you guys see the quote from Kurt Angle? He tweeted out. Uh, he said, quote, I watched an incredible match on SmackDown last night between Cesaro and Daniel Bryan. A technical masterpiece with great submission, trade-offs, and false finishes reminded me of my matches with Benoit. Great job, guys. Hashtag it's Cesaro true. has everything in the ring. Yeah. All the capabilities. Yeah. I, I just thought of this based off of the, the rumor mill and Damian Priest going okay. back to the Rey Mysterio thing. What if the Rey Mysterio thing that he's talking about is Rhea Ripley and she comes out and beats the crap out of Baron Corbin? <laughs> <laughs> Just to really embarrass him? Yeah. yeah. That's possible. That, that, that could be. I yes. could I could see her giving him a T-bone and throwing him around a little, <laughs> then him tucking his tail between his legs and running up the ramp. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just it's trying all to think. speculation. Yeah, it's so those really, are the two rumored names right now. Yeah, yeah, that they're moving up from NXT. Uh, That's interesting. Thickens. Yeah, the so plot thickens. Um, but anyway, like this match here, Cesaro wins or Daniel Bryan clean, and so to Daniel Bryan's credit, in the last two weeks, he put over Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro both clean. So it doesn't been, hurt him at all. Exactly. No. So it's been really amazing, Daniel Bryan. In his time so far, you know, he also made Drew Gulak earlier the, in the uh, within the calendar year. Yeah, and but also jumping ahead, Apollo Cruz is now getting some time to shine. So we see Apollo Cruz backstage with with Roman Reigns, like in the yeah. same room. Yeah. So that was the theme throughout the night was Roman. Uh, Adam Pierce was trying to get Paul Heyman to have Roman sign the contract, but Roman kept rejecting it because he wanted different stipulation. Ultimately, wanted a last man standing stipulation. So I enjoyed it. It was like that thread throughout the night and the back and forth. Paul Heyman was like the Weasley uh, employee. Paul Heyman? Like, yeah. He was I mean, Paul Heyman. I know. <laughs> yeah. He was a Tommy Dreamer and all the other guys who worked in ECW with him. But it seemed very natural for him as far as trying to uh, smooth talk both sides of the party of this of this feud here and trying to convince one, pine, one party or the other to do what he wants. So... Um, even this theme, like I enjoyed earlier nights, we saw uh, Sonya Deville with Adam Pierce, and Sonya said, I, "I was watching some of your old matches on YouTube. Uh, you look great, man." And he's like, "Even if that guy was around right now, he could not take on Roman Reigns." So he's doubting himself and saying he's much older. He's like, he's already doubting that he has no chance against Roman Reigns. I was kind of thinking, man, this sounds like a Rocky Balboa type moment here, like. Um, what I'm getting at, which I'll explain in a second. So I like how, you know, um, Adam Pierce has a lot of doubt in himself. Sonya's trying to boost him up. But it's really interesting seeing Sonya kind of work under him, be his assistant. I see Paul Heyman come in and the back and forth there. Um, I was really surprised early on seeing Adam Pierce so uh, quickly uh, willing to sign the contract, even though he doubts himself against Roman Reigns, which we saw now we know why, ultimately at the end of the show, why he was so quick to sign it. Um, so the at the very end, Roman's like, I'll sign this contract with Adam Pierce in the ring. And I love just the power move there. They get into the ring. Yeah. Roman's like, Adam Pierce sits down first. He's like, I want to sit in that chair. And he makes him get up. And Jay's like, man, get out of the chair. And get your ass out of here. <laughs> and Roman takes Adam Pierce's chair, sits at the head of the table, and then Adam sits down on the other side. Um, Adam- I, I really like that this didn't go on forever because typically the contract signings are like 10 minutes and it's just like a whole lot of pandering to nobody. So yeah. it, it, the fact that this was like they got in, signed it, got out of the ring, and then got into uh, uh, a fake injury and, and <laughs> microphone cutting out. Uh, yeah. Well, one thing I want to mention, uh, I really enjoyed when Roman was walking to the ring. It looked like it was 8K video. I guess that's what I saw on Twitter. Um, it almost looked like a video game, the way he was walking and the camera was focused on him and the background was kind of blurred a little bit. It was like really high def, though. So I don't know. That's something, if you have a chance to rewatch it, look at that video quality. It was really cool. And then... um. So, yeah, Adam Pierce grabs the mic and says, I've been waiting for you to sign that all night long. And he's smiling, smirking. I was like, did he pull a fast one over Roman Reigns and come to find out? He did swerve him. So Adam's walking up the ring and automatically, like, like uh, his knee gives out. He's like, oh, ow. And he grabs the microphone. And unfortunately, as you said, Richard, yeah, the mic was cutting out. 
But to paraphrase, he said, as you know, Roman, in all these contracts, it's standard uh, wording. If the opponent is not able to perform, card is subject to change. You can find a replacement. And therefore, he says, I guess I won't be medically cleared in time for your match at the Royal Rumble. I have my uh, replacement here. And then, boom, Kevin Owens comes out, signs the contract, and he's going to be his opponent at uh, against Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble last man standing match. So mm-hmm. would you think of just that whole swerve right there? I have my. I, I have some thoughts about it. I've got two thoughts. Okay. Number one, I was really disappointed because I wanted to see uh, Adam Pearce and Roman Reigns. However, yes. the way that they did it, I thought was so clever. Yes. Just, just really, really well done. It's just like, oh, that's so good because you know, like everyone's heard that card subject to change. Yeah. And I don't. I can't remember another time where they've ever used that phrasing in a storyline mm-hmm. like this. So it was mm-hmm. just kind of a. Damn, that's that's out of the box thinking. Yeah, so for me, like great smart move on Adam Pierce's party as a WWE official, and I knew he was gonna not probably actually have the match, but he was gonna figure out a way to use his power to get out of it. Um and it was a smart move what he did there. My only you know, from a story standpoint, I was really hoping this was gonna stretch all the way to the actual Royal Rumble to build up some more drama. And what I'm getting at is, you know, we saw the graphic. They made a graphic last week, <laughs> Adam Pierce and Roman Reigns officially at the Royal Rumble. I was like, oh, man, they're going full blown with this. You know, early in the night, we saw him kind of doubt himself. He's like, I'm not that guy I used to be years ago. And uh, even then, that guy probably can't beat Roman. So he has doubts. I would love to see maybe the next couple of weeks, Sonya Deville or whoever trying to pump him up, maybe like a Rocky Balboa. He, he, he starts training. He's like, you know, you really underdog, baby face stats, really build him up. And then at the Royal Rumble, he has the matches scheduled to happen. And he comes out to the ring in his old NWA Ring of Honor gear, or whatever. You know, we haven't seen in years. He comes out to the ring. But then, um, as he's walking up the steps, that's when his like knee gives out, and then he grabs the mic and says, Sub- "Subject to change, card subject to change." And then that's when Kevin Owens comes out. So at the very last minute, that's where he pulled the swerve at the Royal Rumble, live on the pay per view. So, so that way, you know, for all of us fans of him, we do get to see him make his WWE entrance in his old ring gear. But at the last minute, he well, pulls the swerve on Roman Reigns. There, there's. It's a smaller contingent, but there's still an audience that would probably be pretty pissed off if they did it that way, because they would they would wait and want to see Adam, Adam Pierce, Pierce, yeah, because they've watched him, and then they don't get it would probably infuriate some people. True, I mean, you, it, you would have to deliver that the match somewhere, you know, even, uh, whether it's on a Raw or whatever. But I liked what they did; I thought well, it was was good. And here's the thing: I, I do have a question for so. You know, Adam Pierce pulled a fast one over Roman Reigns. Roman's pissed, man, to get you know played on live TV. So there's got to be some consequences for this. So I would love to know how Roman is going to get back at him in some capacity. I know ultimately Adam Pierce technically is more powerful than Roman because he's a WWE official. Who's the one person ahead of him? It's Vince McMahon. So I wonder if Vince Triple McMahon H. or Triple H. I wonder if one of them will get involved somehow. And remember. Paul Heyman last week said on SmackDown, um, I pulled some strings. You're in the gauntlet match now, Adam Pierce. So whoever he talked to, maybe to pull those strings, maybe that person can help Roman get back at Adam Pierce for his uh, his power move. So I, that's, like I said, it's a great storyline. I love everything so far. So that's why I want to keep track of how that might go. So th- like I said, that's just an idea. I have an observation. Um, and then who knows? Maybe... Paul Heyman and uh, Roman Reigns are pissed that they got played by Roman, so maybe they'll try to get him out of his job, and maybe that's how Sonya Deville can become the new GM or something, or WWE official for SmackDown. I don't know. Just Like I said, just different ideas going through my head based on this segment. Great segment. Uh, also, uh, Apollo Crews, you know, he got the win over Sami Zayn. He's going to have a rematch with Big E. I <laughs> love Big E sitting ringside with eating berries in the Ghostbusters sweater. But I also want to ask you, Apollo is he going to be part of Roman Reigns' faction now? Do you, do you want to see I that? I hope so, because he, he got a good rub this week on SmackDown because he was the most relevant I think he's been since NXT. Roman told him, you know, pretty much he likes him. Like, stick stick around. I want he, you to watch. He felt, he felt more relevant with Roman on SmackDown than he did when he was United States champion. Yeah. But he's like, Roman's taking him under his wing, and so he's probably yeah. going to be heel working with him. So I wonder maybe Jay and Apollo – 
are going to have to work together, but will there be some friction down the road? So that's something to keep track of. Like I said, just a lot of, a lot of, uh, different storylines happening here. I love it. Very engaging the whole time. So great episode of SmackDown. So, and looking forward to Royal Rumble less than, uh, two weeks from now. So it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Let's go ahead and wrap up this week's episode of In the Click. Richard, where can all the clicks just find you online? You can find me on Instagram at Pro Wrestling 101 and nowhere else, folks. That's the only place you're allowed to follow me. <laughs> Tommy, how about you? Uh, before I mention my uh, social media handles, do me a favor. Go on the WWE Network right now mm. and watch NXT UK this past week. Walter versus A-Kid. Great match. Yeah, awesome and, stuff. So you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Iron Fist 1982. And I'm Baby Huey. Follow me on Facebook at Baby Huey Official, Twitter and Instagram at Baby Huey 83. And follow In the Click, you know, all over social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to the podcast in the click at gmail.com and uh, thank you to everyone who's been buying merch so far over at teespring store you can get the links to that in our bio of our respective social media pages uh and yes here we are the road to royal rumble coming up looking forward to all that good stuff and let's go home and that's the bottom line because huey said so